This week in the PCC Cup Series, we head back to Mansfield, the site of the second ever PCC Cup Series race, the first being at the Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, which we now hold the Cleveland Grand Prix annually at. Uh, there are some rumors that this track will be allowing all the part-time cars to have an automatic invite here. We'll see about that sometime later this year. And, um, well, last week we saw the first ever green-white checkered at Talladega, and as I expected, it was very chaotic, you could say. Let's go to the race. Your pulse here for the race is Daniel Eckler winning his second pole of the year as he starts and brings a field to the green flag with Isaac Michaels on his outside. If I remember correctly, that was the front row at Carbondale. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Ben Worthington takes a look on the inside, and he'll take second place from Isaac Michaels head onto the backstretch as Dan Lechleiter pulls away head into three and four, and he's already got a two-car length lead headed onto lap two here. Now, we've got a substitute driver in this race, uh, Lenore Scurry here in the number 92. She's currently running in second to last as uh, we start this race. She was only faster than John Kirkpatrick in qualifying, and I think she's just kind of here to keep the car running, I guess, as D'Souza recovers. And here we've got Lechleiter getting ready to put John Kirkpatrick a lap down on lap six. Kirkpatrick has been uh, way off the pace of the leaders, as has Lenora Scurry, but Scurry's been about half a second a lap faster than Kirkpatrick, who, uh, quite frankly, I think uh, shouldn't really be here. You see Lenora Scurry there, right in front of the leaders. She's going to go a lap down here in the next couple of laps or so, so both drivers way off the pace of the leaders. Here is Ryan Griffin making his first start of the year. He replaced Casey Lester in this car after Lester DNQ'd for the first six races of the season, whereas Ryan Griffin steps in the car, qualifies it on the pole in the qualifier, leads the first four laps, and uh, finishes third. Good job for him. And he qualified fifth here today, and he's running in the top ten right now. Another driver making his debut is Chuck Johnson in this number 64, formerly driven by Frank Gazzaretto before he was injured at New York Auto Ring, and he is not doing so hot. He's running in 40th place. Hopefully he can step it up and show uh, why he got that ride. Here is, uh, I believe that's Ben Worthington. Yes, Worthington is being attacked for the position of second place by Isaac Michaels. And Michaels gets a good run on him on the inside there. As we know, the inside line has much more grip than the outside. And it looks like he'll get the position. Yes, he will. And we're going to go on board here with A.J. Murphy. A.J. is a Ohio short track star. He actually grew up racing on this track. So we'd expect him to do well. And there is John Kirkpatrick being... Uh, slow as always so Murphy running in fourth place hopefully he can make a run for the lead here in this MRD Motorsports Acura here's Scott Wallen he qualified for his third race of the season he's running in 27th place right now right in front of Gavin DeGray and uh, I've heard rumors that a couple teams are actually looking to hire him later in the season if the chance arises so hopefully we'll see more of Scott Wallen in the future here's Lechlater putting uh, oh no his engine blows in the 110, that's got to be a heartbreak for that team as he pulls to the inside and surrenders the lead to Isaac Michaels in the four car. But it looks like it looked like he had this race in the bag as he pulls the car to the inside out of the way, and no caution will fly for the 110 car as he pulls to the inside there. He was trying to put John Kirkpatrick about six laps down now here on lap 21 as Isaac Michaels sweeps by on the outside, and Kirkpatrick pulls down and tries to block him, but he says no to that as he puts another lap on him. Isaac Michaels takes the lead. Looks like we've got A.J. Murphy in second there, and we've got four wide in the back there, it looks like, between Ben Worthington, Kelly Blackwater, Joe Craig, and Kirkpatrick, as Kirkpatrick's slow car is riding way up high for some reason, as it looks like Ben Worthington is falling back. He just fell back to, I believe, that sixth place at this point. In the further here, we've got... Clara Kindall and Clara Osir. It looks like they've adapted to these short track conditions, and I'm quite frankly surprised to say that. And they are running in sixth and seventh right now, as uh, Kindall just passed her teammate for the position. Kindall has been uh, known as Clara Crashall, but I think she's been changing that up here, as she hasn't crashed in the last couple races. Here is Isaac Michaels continuing to lead over A.J. Murphy, but he is feeling a lot of heat from Murphy there in that 37 car. Murphy 
is notorious here as a uh, great racer. As Gavin DeGray pulls into the pits, Isaac Michaels checks up, and A.J. Murphy takes a look on the inside as the crowd goes wild as Murphy takes the lead on the inside here on lap 28. And Isaac Michaels falls back to second. We're going to take a look and see what happened here to Gavin DeGray as it looks like a tire went down on that 728 car as he tries to pull to the bottom, but there's a bunch of cars coming, and he decides to be courteous and let them by on the out on the uh, inside. He pulls to the outside, and then he sweeps across the track right in front of Barry Juveno and makes it into the pits safely. Good driving by him. He'll fall a couple laps down. A.J. Murphy, the hometown hero, he's running way in front. I, can, I can't even see uh, Isaac Michaels in any of these shots. So he must have pulled way away from him as the uh, crowd's going wild and they're all wearing AJ Murphy gear. As there's smoke on the inside there, Chester Benson blows up here on uh, lap 29 uh, from 18th place. Tough break for him. He was having a pretty strong run. He holds up uh, Ramsey Cockner on the inside but makes it back into the pits safely. Uh, really tough break for that 30 team. They're notoriously good at the short tracks and they were looking for a good run here today as here we've got A.J. Murphy as he continuously puts more cars lap down. It looks like, yep, uh, John Kirkpatrick goes and uh, uh, I believe that's eight laps down now. As uh, Gavin DeGray, what are you doing? He merges up right in front of A.J. Murphy and, uh, Mur well, Murphy still holds on to the lead, but what are you doing, Gavin DeGray? You should watch, uh, or at least tell, have your spotter tell you where he's going because he nearly took out the leader there. Ryan Griffin continues to run in ninth place. And he's got a couple other cars behind him. Jacob Eichholz and uh, I believe that's uh, John Jefferson behind him in 11th place. But Ryan Griffin takes over for Casey Lester. Uh, some people were saying that it's the uh, car that was having issues. And I, uh, Ryan Griffin's proven them wrong. And I, I think it might have been the driver of that car that was the problem. Uh, past few weeks. Here's Ryan Jeffries. He's running in 19th place. He won this race last year over Claire Ossier. He made a pass with a couple laps to go, but he's nowhere as strong this year. He is, uh, yeah, about 20th place as he puts another lap on John Kirkpatrick. As we take a lap on board John Kirkpatrick here, uh, I believe we're experiencing some technical difficulties with that camera. As you see, cars just flying by him. He's been way off the pace every single race he's run and I don't see him getting faster anytime soon to be entirely honest as even Dan Foray who's running uh, in the in like 35th goes by him there. Caution one fly on lap 49. Nicholas Cordovo's on the outside he's running in about 38th position as Richard D. MacGyver and Cameron Taylor fight over position and they spin Cordovo's to the inside of the track on the back straightaway. Cordovo's gets that car righted and he'll continue on. His day has been nothing but a disaster in that 39 car. AJ Murphy comes out of the pits with the lead, but uh, for some reason he decides to pull to the inside and uh, what, what are you doing, AJ Murphy? Why did you just hit the outside wall? Did, did, you, did you think you could get back on the track by going through the wall? Uh, physics don't work like that, Murphy, I'm sorry. As it looks like Ben Worthington will take the lead on the restart, Ramsey Cockner is on the tail end of the lead lap there. And Worthington continues to lead as he pulls away from second place, Claire Ossier. Uh, and it looks like uh, we've got Joe Craig in fourth, Isaac Michaels running, still running in the top five back there in fifth. Caution two on lap 57. Cautions do breed cautions here as John Jefferson spins Jacob Eichholz to the inside of the track as they take the yellow flag. Not really a uh, harmless, uh, harmful incident, excuse me as here we've got Ben Worthington leading once again on the restart. Same order, although it looks like Isaac Michaels did get by Joe Craig for the position there, so he runs in third place as Ben Worthington gets a good run on the outside there, and he brings them to the caution flag. Caution three here on lap 63. Lenore Scurry gets spun by Richard Dean McGuire on the back straightaway. Sam Brown piles in Ramsey Cockiner and Nicholas Corridovos as if his day couldn't get any worse as Lenore Scurry uh, stays in the race as Ben Worthington once again leads on the restart. Ben Worthington proving that he is very strong indeed as we've got a car blowing up on the inside as, whoa, what are you doing there, John Kirkpatrick? He pulls up into Chuck Johnson as 
Ryan Jeffries here on the inside has blown up coming to the restart. He pulls his car into the pits. Tough break for the former winner of this race. He won last year as Isaac Michaels dives into the pits too. A couple laps later, I think he was reporting oil on his tires and on his windshield. Either that or uh, something was not right with that car. So he pulls into the pit stuff break for him. After royally messing up that last pit stop, uh, AJ Murphy is currently running in sixth place. He's worked his way back up into the top ten. He's running right behind Ryan Griffin right now, who holds down the final position in the top five as uh, they work their way through a multitude of uh, lapped cars. Here is Andy Lambert. He's running in the top ten. He's running in tenth place as he puts Scott Wallen a lap down there. And he's having a pretty good run here today. Uh, as uh, hopefully he's trying to get back in the top three as it looks like we've got four wide back there again between a couple other cars. We're going to go and take a look at, uh, yep, we've got Scott Wallen, Stringfellow Vincent, Jacob Eichholz, and John Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick is 18 laps down by lap 77 as uh, I think he had a bit of uh, trouble with that car because he was in the pits for uh, quite a few laps, but as you can see, it, it hasn't helped his pace much as he's falling way back. Ben Worthington still leads, but here is Claire Ossier running in second place as uh, she gets ready to put John Kirkpatrick an umpteenth lap down as, yep, she goes by right there, and she has been a championship contender all year in this number 11 car. She's been up near the front nearly every race. I think she's finished in the top 10 in all but one race up to this point, so she is being the model of consistency this season. Barry Juvenile is running in third place, slowly catching Clara Kindle, and he is also a championship contender. He is looking to win the championship that was stolen from him last year after he DNPQ'd for the Cleveland Grand Prix, his home race, I should say. This is also one of his home races as uh, he is a native of Cleveland, and he's trying to put forth a good effort for the fans in front of his home crowd. And uh, Ben Worthington, this is his first time driving solo as his teammate Edward Carroll failed to qualify for this race. That was a surprise. Edward Carroll, he has a few wins to his name actually in the past few seasons and uh, he's been in championship contending equipment so I'm honestly surprised to see that he missed this race but one of the people who they're looking to hire in place of him is Scott Wallen here as uh, Wallen is running in 22nd right now. He is uh, heavily being heavily rumored for this 36 car and uh, he's He's showing why they should hire him because this car does not have the speed to be where he's put it. He is shooting. Uh, he is uh, going way above his uh, way above his equipment here today. And here is Kelly Blackwater. She's running in 27th position. Last week she finished in third, uh, an amazing third place in the same car. And uh, kids across the nation ate free as a Golden Corral promi uh, promotion, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen here today. And uh, it looks, yes, Claire Ossier is under attack for second place by Barry Juvenile. He finally did catch her as the two championship contenders this year, or two of the championship contenders, are battling for second place. It looks like Juvenile's got the speed coming out of the turn as he looks to the inside there on Claire Ossier as he makes the move to the bottom. And he will take the position from the Quebecois driver as uh, Claire Ossier obviously is not too thrilled as she overdrives and hit, gets into Sam Brown there. Not sure why she did that. I think she finally uh, let the frustration get to her and she had to take it out on someone. That's someone being uh, Sam Brown, an innocent victim in this uh, whole circumstance. And here is here's John Jefferson. He's running in the top 10 in seventh place here and uh, he's putting forth a really good effort. All of his sponsors are uh, Cleveland area sponsors. And oh, it looks like we've got smoke up here, caution four on lap 111. And I believe that John Jefferson was involved as Cameron Taylor hits the inside wall. He got turned by Barry Juveno. Sits in the middle of the track and there's Isaac Michaels as he's barrel rolling down the track. AJ Murphy's collected as well as John Jefferson there. And we're gonna go on board Murph Dog here as he likes to be called as he gets he rear ends uh, Michaels. I, he took. He was taken completely by surprise as he drives away with a bit of damage on his car. Uh, I think he'll be fine. He uh, 
didn't report any terminal damage as Ben Worthington leads once again on the restart. He brings the field around. Claire Ossier got a much better restart, and I believe, yes, Ryan Griffin is in third place. John Jefferson is running in fourth despite having a crumpled front end on that car. And, I yes, the caution flag is waving. Caution five on lap 116. Looking back in the pack, Lenore Scurry gets bumped up the track. She gets spun by Stringfellow Vincent. There's Andy Lambert, as well as Jacob Eichholz getting spun. And uh, what, what are breaks? Kelly Blackwater runs into Chris Winter, and Chris Winter's done, and Ike Durbin decides to uh, run into another car there for some reason. Chuck Johnson gets hooked on the track right in front of Richard D. McIver, and McIver has none of it, and he dumps Chuck Johnson into the wall despite it uh, not being of his own doing. Ben Worthington and Claire Ossier dive into the pits, so that means that Ryan Griffin is going to lead on the restart in this number 44 car. Karg DNQs for the first six races. Ryan Griffin solidly puts it in the show and is leading here with less than 100 to go. Now that's what I talk about turning a team around, but unfortunately there's another caution flag. Uh, caution six on lap 123. John Brachi gets turned by Barry Juveno, and he shoots right up the track, and instant karma as Barry Juveno gets taken out by the car he took out. Ben Worthington and Nicholas Corradovos are also involved, as that would put Barry Juveno out of the race. Ryan Griffin continues to lead on the restart, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him in this car a lot more, considering he, well, put a car that has not qualified for any race this season, and now he's leading with it with uh, less than 100 laps to go. Uh, seems like a no-brainer to keep him in that car for the rest of the season, uh, considering Casey Lester hasn't really done anything with it at all. Richard Dean McGyver has an issue, and he pulls that car to the apron. I think that he uh, might have some mechanical troubles here, as he was running in the top 10 when this happened, and he slows to a stop and parks the car right there out of troubles, uh, out of harm's way and no caution as the leaders go by. But Stringfellow Vincent here goes low, and what are you doing? He pulls up the track, and his teammate goes into the wall. Caution seven on lap 131. We're gonna go back and see what happened to Pete Maverick as he gets turned into the wall by Chuck Johnson, gets ready to get going. And oh, he got flipped onto his roof there by Gavin DeGray, Kelly Blackwater, and a couple other cars were also involved. Wow, did not expect to see that at all. And here is Ryan Griffin leading once again on the restart. Nobody was able to make any kind of run on him because, well, cautions breed cautions here and can't really do much when people are wrecking every other lap under green. But it looks like he's got a cushion of uh, Lenny Jacobs and Ian Elias on the rest of the field. Here is Chris, uh, Chris Benson who is running in second place. He managed to get by Ian Elias in that 32 car and he is slowly hunting down Ryan Griffin in that 44 car as Lenny Jacobs is right in front of him. Both of those cars are one lap down, but still hanging in the top 10. I believe they're running seventh and eighth at the moment, so not too many cars left on the lead lap. And here is uh, John Jefferson, who is running in the top 10 as they put uh, John Kirkpatrick 20 odd laps down. He's, he, he's so off the pace, it's, it's not even funny at this point. But John Jefferson is putting forth a championship run the team that could, the little team that could, they are somehow pulling together these awesome runs out of nowhere. I don't know how they're doing it, but here is Ryan Griffin. He has been caught by Chris Benson, and he's just lurking back there. As they get ready to put Lenore Scurry uh, something like 15 or 20 laps down, she, she's had one hell of a day, uh, not in a good way either. But Ryan Griffin trying to hold off challenges from Chris Benson in that number 55, uh, the 55 Strasphere Tenere. Despite Stringfellow Vincent's earlier brain fade, he is running in sixth place on the lead lap somehow, and he, he is the strongest of the Retro 80 racing cars still running. In fact, he's the only one that's running that's still on the lead lap, as he puts John Kirkpatrick another lap down. I believe that's 20 now, and it looks like we've got Ryan Griffin on the apron. Let's see what happened. Oh, as he was leading, it looks like something broke down on his car as he stopped. He slowed down right in front of Chris Benson as John Jefferson takes a look on the outside of that 55 as Ryan Griffin a heartbreak for that team as in their first start they could have won this thing and as you see here John Jefferson he took a look on the outside but didn't have quite the momentum John Bracci was there so he just pulls down to the inside and will settle for second for now 
as he tries to chase down Chris Benson once again in that number 23 car. They're underfunded. I think they're going to try and make the run over to uh, Europe later in the season. Here's Tommy Urban. We haven't talked about him at all today. He's running in 13th place, uh, I believe two laps down at this point. He's had a strong, quiet run all day, and he's uh, been keeping himself out of trouble in that car. And Claire Ossier has caught John Jefferson for the second position as she just sweeps right by him. That uh, Meridian power isn't quite good enough to keep him up there in contention for the win, but he is definitely looking for a top five run today. But Claire Ossier is quickly chasing down uh, the 55 car of Chris Benson, who is uh, currently putting a, quite a few cars between himself and the leader as he puts Clara Kendall up here. A lap down here. She's running in eighth place right now. And uh, Chris Benson trying to run away with this thing. He performed admirably at Las Vegas before uh, uh, he fell back later in the going. As he puts uh, John Kirkpatrick, I believe that's uh, 29 or 30 laps down right now. Caution 8 would fly on lap 181. Here, uh, Craig Yonser tries to go low on Nicholas Cordova. He gets hooked by Jacob Eichholz and put into the inside wall. And that's going to take him out of the race and uh, Ramsey Cockner gets into them. As you see all that smoke coming from uh, Craig Yonser, his day is done. Z tries to drive away. He, tr he was close to getting a win at Talladega, but decided to be a hero on the last couple laps, and we've got some debris up there on the track and some smoke. Oh, Preston Bell got into the wall, slid the rear end, and uh, Ryan Griffin wasn't gonna take any of that and uh, got him going in the right way despite the smoke in the tires. Chris Benson leads on the restart there with uh, Scott Wallen on the bottom. Claire Ossier in second place. He pulls way ahead of them. As it looks like we've got three wide back there in the pack, but Caution 9 would fly on lap 188 with just 12 laps to go here. As uh, on the restart, oh, what what are you doing, Nicholas Cordova? He pulls right up in front of Pete Maverick, who somehow kept going, and... Uh, Joe Craig decided to put Cordovas out of his misery. Cordovas would fall out of the race with just six laps to go. Uh, Chris Benson leads the field to the restart with Scott Wallen right behind him between Claire Ossier and him. As Scott Wallen, he makes a move to the inside being pushed by Claire, uh, Claire Ossier. And Scott Wallen will get by Chris Benson and, put him, and uh, take one lap off of that counter as it looks like we've got problems with Richard Dean MacGyver there on the inside. But Claire Ossier will take the lead with uh, John Jefferson right behind her as uh, she thanks Scott Wallen for helping her get to the lead as she puts him a lap down again as uh, Claire Ossier pulls away from the rest of the pack as Richard Dean MacGyver pulls out of the pits there on the bottom. John Jefferson having one hell of a run. He's in second place right now and this will be the best finish for this team ever. They've never even come close to winning a race aside from uh, a couple of the short tracks this season and uh, I, if, if this doesn't get the team to Europe with funding, I don't know what will. Claire Ossier puts John Kirkpatrick 30 laps down there with just two laps to go. She puts Lenore Scurry 21 laps down as she takes the white flag. Claire Ossier showing that she is a threat for the championship this season and will stop at nothing to get that championship won. She pulls down the back straightaway, pulls into turn three. Clear sailing for Claire Ossier as she takes the win at Mansfield here. John Jefferson hangs on for his best finish of the season. Ben Worthington finishes a strong third place. He managed to get by Chris Benson, as well as string fellow Vincent. Best run of his career, I believe, at this point. Fourth place for him. Chris Benson, despite leading on that final restart, fell back to fifth place. He was unable to uh, get to the bottom and defend his position. Lenny Jacobs and Ian Elias are the first two cars one lap down for Paloma Autosport. Clara Kindle surprisingly doesn't wreck. And she finishes in 8th place, one lap down. Ramsey Cockner, a good run for him despite getting some uh, right front damage in one of the wrecks. And Andy Lambert, last year's champion, finishes in 10th place, one lap down. Good run for him.